back at it like a crack at it. They done let them bruise in the dough. In this wicked industry, to shine the light. Uh. They done let them bruise in the dough. Oh uh, shit. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Uh, uh. They done let them bruise in the dough. We ain't going nowhere. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. Uh, he bruised. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Look, Joe Biden need to free Dark Low. The hell is wrong with dude? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Deacon Sakari, new clothing line, the whole armor. Put it on. New clothing line out right now. We got apparel for the sisters, apparel for the kids, and of course, apparel for the mighty men of Israel. We got quality material, affordable prices, y'all. Check it out. We got stuff for the Southern Kingdom. We got stuff for the Northern Kingdom. We got exclusivity. All right? Y'all see it. Y'all see the brew drip. Y'all see the brew sauce. All right? Deacon Sakari new clothing line called thewholearmor.com. All right, everybody go support support Israelite businesses. And I greatly appreciate y'all. Shalom. Out, we bail on him. Leviticus, I like my fish with scales on him. Ask Chief Ephraim, he could vouch. We be putting in the work while you sitting on the couch. Camp haters quiet as a mouse. Yeah, I ready. Shout out to my brother, Austin Trout. Just as a reminder, if there's doubt, I wear every single fringe, even when I'm in the house. Get all your truth music at DeaconSakari.com. That's nine albums. We even got a couple free for y'all. Support the cause, y'all. I see a lot of haters, I do it will come with it, rap game full of evil and sin, and I don't want none of it, they bite my style, they just want to take it and run with it. Sakari Varsity, online academy specializing in Hebrew apologetics, come learn how to defend the gospel, email sakariseattle at gmail.com, limited registration. Sakari. All nations, what? above all nations, all nations. Yeah. We are the chosen of the one you have. We above. We finally back on. Finally back on. Children's Bibles with black and brown images. I know a lot of y'all been waiting. You better. A lot of people on back order. We still got some though. Put your order in before it's too late. I'm going to start having them regularly, Lord willing. But get it in. Let's go. Hit me up. DM. Even your head wraps. Stay dipped. Stay brew dripping. All right. DeaconSakari.com. All right, y'all. Go to CZYN.network. CZYN.network. We done with Patreon. No more Patreon. CZYN.network. You're going to get videos too hot for YouTube or early releases. So go sign up. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Not only do you get Deacon Sakari's content, you get Guerrilla Hebrew content, Hassad content, other camps putting their content on this platform. We need our own app. So sign up using promo code Deacon Sakari. C-Z-Y-N dot network. It's our own app, our own platform. The white man can no longer subvert or hide or try to censor this truth. So sign up and get this heat. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. CZY. Praises. Get your commercial played here. Contact Sakari Seattle at gmail.com. Introducing Super Thanks. YouTube has now added a feature where you can donate if you miss the live show by just clicking the heart button with the thanks on it. It'll be on every video. It'll highlight your comment to bring more attention to your statement. So if it's on your heart, 
Super thanks. Shalom. Popping mollies and putting powder in your nostrils. We be in the trenches, needles under benches. We be giving them the gospel. I keep 12 Sakari members with me. We be moving like apostles. True. Some stitches is dead traps, hair wraps, but just a lithotno. The church don't even know the truth. They can even tell you you an Israelite. The Arabs selling you all the switches and the malt liquor or the Ishmaelite. You can show a nigga slave ships in the Bible, still won't get it right. Until the time's out, then a nigga gotta find out what them missiles like. Mic check, mic check. <clears throat> mic check, mic check. Audio visual check. Audio visual check. Phone ringing, Jack. Jerry ringing, Jack. <laughs> all right. First and foremost, let's start this off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to our Heavenly Father, the Creator, Yahweh. Real name Yahweh in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. Got to give honor and glory to our Heavenly Father. We do so in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Real name Yahweh Shai. Thank the Most High for another day. And not just for another day for us to play, but for another day for us to pray. You heard? <clears throat> not another day to play, but another day to pray. And uh, we definitely have to examine ourselves on this day. Hit that like button. This lesson is very important and synonymous with our salvation. With our deliverance, you guys might say, um, who is the most high? You guys might say, who is the most high waiting on? The most high is waiting on you guys. The most high is waiting on you guys. That's who the most high is waiting on. We are not waiting on the most high to send his son. We are not waiting on the most high to send his son. Right? Somebody said, are you going to comment on OJ Simpson? Rest in peace to the late, great O.J. Simpson, a.k.a. the Juice Man, who caught a body, who caught a body for the culture, who caught a body for the culture. Give it up for him. <laughs> Caught two Edomite bodies, two Edomite bodies for our culture, for our people after all they've done to us. R.I.P. to O.J. the Juice Man right oj simpson so back to what i was saying here we are not waiting on the most high the most high is waiting on us i can't speak for all of you guys that's right put them oranges in the chat that's right oranges in the chat Oranges in the chat for OJ the Juice Man, right? Uh, if y'all didn't hear about that, I don't know what to tell you. Where you been living at? Under a rock? Everybody climb in and hit that like button. Climb in and hit that like button. Climb on in and hit that like button. Let me share it. Let me share this again. We got to talk about it today. We got to talk about it today. All right? We got to talk about it today. Uh, 
<clears throat> so this is a, a topic that sparked my interest dealing with uh, how we are competing. I'm competing with you guys and you guys should be competing with me. We're all competing to be a part of the elect. Think about that. We are all competing to be a part of the elect. I do God's work every single day of the week, no days off. Four hours. Not to mention, you know, behind the scenes, councils, alms, advice, biblical questions, making myself available. So if we're all competing to be a part of the elect, it's like the NFL draft or the NBA draft. Do you really, and only you guys can answer this, do you really think you're doing enough to get that ticket onto a chariot and be a, to be a part of the elect? Because there's other individuals out here putting in work every single day for God. Not just keeping the commandments, the law, statutes, and commandments. But I mean, the work they're putting in. Can you say that? This is why this lesson is so important today. And next week, you guys are going to be in for a bomb because this goes into something very important in time prophecy that I will not mention today. But a PowerPoint presentation is coming by next week, Lord's will, of what even jump started and sparked this topic. Not just doing God's work every day teaching the people, teaching your family and friends, studying, studying. You see? Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to say what the women could do or what the men could do. Like, you should know. Everybody should know. This is a this is an NFL draft coming up. And you got people out here who are outworking you, outsmarting you, tapping in, getting connections, networking, promoting themselves, marketing themselves. And you're doing the bare minimum. Maybe I will say what the women can do and what the men can do. But first, I'm going I'm to go through, I'm just going to speak generally. The whole NFL draft coming. Are you doing as much as the deacon? And I'm not saying this to because to, we don't know if we're for sure of the elect yet. We don't know yet. We will know at the end. But we do know how the Bible says you could be a part of the elect. Ken, you're saying you're doing as much as the deacon? And if not, you should. Do more than the deacon. <clears throat> I feel like I can do more right now. I'm not content. I'm not satisfied. I'm not complacent. But let's just let's just set a measuring stick. Are you doing God's work every day? It's bigger than just keeping the commandments. Your righteousness has to exceed the, that of the Pharisees. 
the Messiah already said it. Do more than the deacon. Live a lifestyle of keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Teach it to your family. Make sure your kids are doing it. Remember, it says on our children's children, then we get delivered. Do what your house shot said. Do the work. Study, read, pray, fast. Let your light shine. Give alms. The Bible does say alms covers a multitude of sins. Give alms. But I'm, don't give alms to T.D. Jakes and, you know, the wicked fake pastors, right? <clears throat> uh, these are things that we can do every day to make sure our, we're given diligence to make our calling and election sure. This is how narrow the gate is. Every video I've been doing lately has almost had a thousand people watching. Right now, we only have a couple hundred people. Why? Because topics like this is only for the narrow gate. This is not entertainment. This makes people feel uncomfortable. They don't want to do more. They don't want to get outside of their comfort, comfort zone. They don't want to fire lit up under their ass. Nevertheless, if we can get one or two or three, we're closer to the elect being sealed to get off their ass and do God's work every day. Right? So I'm going to speak a lot more about this. How does my layout look? Let's take a look at my layout here. How does this layout look? That's how it looks. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> that's fine. Hold on right there. So Luke 17 and 21, Luke chapter 17, verse 21, it says, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, meaning, oh, it's over there, it's over here. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. He's not waiting for us. I'm sorry. We're not waiting for him. He's waiting for us. The moment we understand the kingdom of God is within us, meaning we can manifest it and bring it forth, by what? By everybody doing God's work every day. By living a lifestyle and keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments. By giving alms, by being a brother, by being a sister, by being a good husband, by being a good wife, by being a great father, by being a great mother. By giving resources to the ministry. By studying, praying, fasting. By going to your communities, passing out flyers, teaching in your communities if you're able-bodied and have the ability by sharing videos, liking the video. Whatever you can do, do more. The same way you work 14 days in a row at your job. And this is why a lot of you guys are gonna lose the kingdom because you love your lives. The same way you'll work a 12 hour shift at the job, oh, I'm tired, I just worked a 12 hour shift, I'm tired kick my feet up and drink my cold one and relax. The same way you'll do that is the same way you need to be burnt out and exhausted for, for, for doing God's work in this ministry. I mean, I know whole, I know niggas who have a bag and it ain't, it just ain't even just about money. I know niggas who have a bag 
or wouldn't give a goddamn dollar to the ministry. Not even to hell with Sakari. This isn't about Sakari. This is about the body of Christ. All the camps and congregations, all the individual lights, all of them. The believers. I know niggas who got a bag in this truth. Wouldn't give a Chinese nickel. And when and, and if we were in a position where we had to ask those individuals for some help, it's like pulling teeth. I ain't gonna say no name. But the kingdom of God is within us. Meaning when we all do more, that's going to affect other Israelites and wake them up and help them. And that's going to put a fire under them to help the next. It's, it's a chain reaction. Now we are collectively on fire. Collectively on fire. Right? But Deacon, Jesus Christ told us how to get salvation. You're right. He did tell us how to get salvation. Let's read about that. Now, Deacon, are you saying if a, if a brother's not doing the work that he's not going to get salvation? I'm just going to read what the Bible says. Make your calling and election sure. There are individuals who are doing way more than you, and you think that you are going to get on a chariot. Now, one might ask, this just popped up in my mind. One might say, well, what about each person getting the same penny? You're right. That's not talking about the work they put in. That's talking about when they came in. So let's say I've been doing God's work seven days a week for 10 years, and then another brother comes in, and he's he has that same fire, but he's only in the truth six months before Christ comes. He's getting the same reward. It's not talking about a nigga is sitting on his ass just keeping the Sabbath and not eating pork and keep and having a beard, and he gets the same reward as a nigga who's doing that plus a thousand times more? Absolutely not. That would be an injustice. So in Matthew 19 and 16, it says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing that shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why calls me good? There is none good but one, that is, the Most High. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. So are Israelites who aren't doing the work or bare minimum keeping the commandments? I'm going to prove to you, no. Are Israelite women and men and even children, are they doing the commandments if they're just merely doing the bare minimum? No. So he starts to mention the Mosaic laws. We know that, right? What does the Mosaic law say? Let's get to the nitty gritty of it. Because if we're competing for this NFL draft, it's looking like there's only a few brothers who are getting drafted. A few sisters who are getting drafted to the WNBA. I'm talking about the, the NBA and the WNBA. Deuteronomy 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have said before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord has driven thee. We're here. This is where we're at. We've been driven among the nations, and we have called to mind and woke up to the fact that we are under the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Verse 2, then we will return unto the Lord our God and shall obey his voice 
according to all. How many? All. The commandments that he commanded that day. Thou and thy children with what? With all thine heart and with all thy soul. Me. This is what gets you into that draft. Uh, Georgia McWilliams, the water for the super chat donation, greatly appreciate you. This is what gets you in the draft. This is what gets you drafted to be a part of the elect with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Who can say that? Who can say that? That you're keeping the commandments with all your heart and with all your soul. Because when we all can say that as a collective, then, look at verse 3, then the Lord will end our captivity. So the fact that most of you can't say this shows that you want to remain in our captivity. And have compassion on us. You don't want the Lord to have compassion on us. Even though we're not in the physical chains anymore, we are in the prison system. That's still our slavery and captivity. We still are systemically oppressed. And getting trodden down in the streets daily. What is one of the commandments that some of you some of you guys aren't keeping? Well, here's a commandment that some of you aren't keeping. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto Moses. This is talking about who the world ignorantly calls Christ. And I will put my words in his mouth. So when the Messiah is speaking, who's speaking? The Father, the Most High. It's on that same level as authority. He's telling his son what to say. And he shall speak unto them all that I command him. Verse 19. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which the Messiah shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. You have to pay a penalty. Well, what commandment did Yahweh Shai give that a lot of Israelites are breaking? Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Who's that? Matthew chapter 22, verse 2. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son.
and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Again, he sent forth his other servants saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. The wedding is the Israelites being a bride. Do you know everything we need? Okay. The marriage is the bridegroom is who the world calls Christ. The bride is the Israelite believers. It's open to all Israelites, but only the Israelite believers who qualify, who are putting in the work, who are doing the commandments with all their heart, all their soul, going above and beyond, giving diligence to make their calling and election sure. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Lion of Judah, do you think I give a fuck who wants to link right now? I'm in the middle of a serious lesson. Whoever wants to link can fuck off right now. With all due respect. With all due disrespect. Anyway, so one went to his farm and another went to his merchandise. Meaning what? Instead of going above and beyond in this truth, instead of going above and beyond in this truth, nigga went home. He's a what? A couch prophet, a house prophet. You know them keyboard warriors? You know them Israelites that say they're going to get saved for sharing memes on Instagram? Them guys. One went to his farm to be a keyboard warrior, to be an Instagram meme sharer, and a couch prophet. Another went to his merchandise. So instead of going above and beyond in the truth, he said, I got to focus on my job. I got to focus on my business. I have to focus on my cryptocurrency, my investments. How many of y'all did that? How many of y'all are doing that? Remember, what Yahweh Shai teaches is commandment. We just read that. So you think you, you know, you're 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 trying to keep or you're pursuing and attempting to keep the Torah, but you have equivocal, you have Torah right here in red letter. And the remnant, verse six, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. They killed the prophets. But when the king heard it, he was robbed and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. That's what's happening to the prophet killers. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden are not worthy. This is going back 2,000 years ago. That's right, sister. Step up or move out the way. Well, they don't got to move out the way. God's going to take them out the way. He's going to remove their candlesticks. All you brothers and sisters who are not going above and beyond because it's the end of the world 
you're going to get removed. So who was not worthy 2000 years ago? Those of us that did not accept um, the bidding to the marriage, those who rejected the Messiah. A remnant of us did reject the Messiah. So because the Israelites, the pharmaceutical or those walking in Jewry didn't accept the marriage, it says, verse nine, go ye therefore. See, this is a lot of this is a commandment that a lot of Israelites are breaking. You're not going above and beyond. You're not keeping this commandment. Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. How are you bidding? What highways are you on? Oh, I'm on the internet highway. Okay, you know what? That's fine, but it can't stop there. There's people who don't give a damn about the internet. With now, and we know what he meant. He meant hit the streets like the prophets of old. And for you soft Israelites, uh, Zaquan Amawan, the water for the super chat donation, greatly appreciate you. For you soft Israelites who say, oh, well, are you saying we have to go and yell and scream? No, I'm not saying that. Leave that to me. <laughs> I'm the nigga blowing the voice like the trumpet. I'm the nigga rebuking in the gates. Leave that to me, to the to the lion of Judah. You heard? To one of the lions of Judah. I'm just saying, do what the Messiah said and get out there in the street, in the chief place of commerce and teach the word to your people, bid them to the marriage. Now, it does say, it, it doesn't say you have to go out there and, you know, rebuke and, you know, um, get on people. You can simply go out there and teach that, hey, you know, we're the Israelites. I'm only here for my people. I don't want to engage with you heathens. This isn't for you. Hey, brother, hey, sister, this is for you. Hey, Latino man, hey, Native American man, this is for you. You ain't got to go out there and be like me. I'm that nigga. I'm Hemothy, chapter 3, verse 2. I'm Hemothy, chapter 3, verse 2 in the KJV. <laughs> Excuse me. Right? But a lot of Israelites are not keeping this commandment. Therefore, they're not going to be worthy of this draft that's coming up. Because their brothers that are keeping this commandment going way above and beyond you. And you think you're about to get their same reward. Verse 10, so those servants went out into the highways and did as he they were commanded to do and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, because you don't know which nigga is in the truth that you're going to find out to be evil. Niggas, we, we done brought niggas in who committed adultery with their father's wives. We didn't know they were going to do that eventually. So you're bringing in the bad and good, and eventually they will reveal themselves and be removed and weeded out. Now watch this, though. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, this is also what you guys have to look at. He was there, there was there, he was there a man which had not a, on a wedding garment. See, some of you guys think you're in this thing because you got your beard, your fringes. You may even bought some clothes. You may even be in the Sakari Varsity Online Academy specializing in Hebrew apologetics. You might have bought a, bought a Bible from Ariala, a Hebrew Israelite Bible. And that's all you're doing. That's not a glorious wedding garment you're going to have. That's a bed sheet you're going to have. You got to do more than just those things. 
you're coming, you're trying to be in this marriage without a royal, glorious wedding garment. Oh, and you just can't be there. You're trying to throw your Hawashai's message. I'm sorry, you're throwing you're trying to throw your Hawashai's marriage ceremony at the damn uh community center. You're trying to throw your Hawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. You're trying to throw his marriage ceremony at a Bed, Bath, and Beyond warehouse. No. And he said unto him, friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? So some of y'all going to be like, I thought I was, I thought I was doing it. And the Lord going to say, you wasn't going above and beyond for me. You wasn't living your life like you wanted to get saved from a goddamn thermonuclear holocaust. If you guys really believe that the end of the world is coming and the plagues are coming, you will be doing more. You guys don't believe this Bible. Imagine, imagine knowing for sure that the plagues are coming and the end of the world is coming, a thermonuclear holocaust and a lake of fire, and you're, and you're still lackadaisical in your walk with God. You don't believe that. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter five. Ephesians chapter five. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. and gave himself for it. You remember all the crying and weeping that the Lord was doing that because he didn't want to go through that crucifixion? You remember the Lord bowed down to the ground, crying out to his father if they could do this some other way. Remember that? And the Lord didn't answer him. Then he had to go through everything he went through on the way up to getting crucified. And you think he did all of that so your bitch ass could just be so goddamn lackadaisical. So lukewarm. So remedial and mediocre. If the Lord was looking down at your life, brother or sister, and he said, yep, I got beat with a cat of nine tails, 40 lashes, crown of thorns, drunk piss, beat, black eye, patches of my beard snatched out, put on a cross, nails in my hands and feet, ultimately pierced in my side and suspended. For you to just do the bare minimum.
Oh, man. Give me one second, y'all. You know. I need a moment. I need a moment. That was heavy. That was heavy. <sighs> no, I'm not mad. It was just painting that picture. Painting that picture was heavy. Everything he went through. That was heavy. That was my first meltdown on camera. <clears throat> Whew. That was my first meltdown on camera. But it's really deep to sit up here and think about what our Lord went through and uh, how he did that for us. And uh, we're not reciprocating that. You know, um, I'm going to try to keep going. I'm going to try to keep going. All right. Can y'all see my screen? Can y'all see my screen? Not me. Y'all don't need to see my face no more. But can y'all see the screen? All right. Uh, so, Ephesians 5 and 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, with the washing of water by the word. Verse 27. This is the key point that I thought I was going to. <laughs> uh, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. A glorious church. Not having spot. This is, mo this is, this is the point I wanted to focus on. We're not going to be the glorious church and the glorious bride without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So <clears throat> the only way for us to be presented as a bride without blemish, having spot or wrinkle, is if we go above and beyond for Yahweh Shai and Yahweh, of course, everything is, you know, for the Most High God, but reciprocating the love for Yahweh Shai that he gave to us by him going above and beyond and doing what he did not want to do. That's the only way that we can have this glorious church and bride having no spot. Can we really? And this is to self-examine. Can we really say that we are the bride, the glorious church without spot or without wrinkle. Now we know for sure that this can't be the Christian church. We know for sure this can't be the Christian church. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Can you say that we are at a point where we are this glorious church without spot and without wrinkle? We can't.
Why though? Because some of some of you guys. <clears throat> Some of you guys, not all of you guys, but because of some of you guys. That's why 2 Peter 1, chapter 10, verse 11. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence. Diligence. What does the word diligent mean? <clears throat> Careful and persistent work effort. Careful. Careful. <clears throat> How many of y'all are careful about where you eat, about what you eat, about who you're around, about what you do in public? about being in order, about having to set schedule so that you can have time for the most high in the kingdom and put your brick in. And persistent work effort. Persistent work or effort. Persistent. Not, oh, I was on fire. I fell off for a second. I'm going to get back on. Now, I know a righteous man falls seven times and get back up. I understand that. But persistent work or effort. Why does it always have to be, I fell off for, I fell off for a while, I'm back now. I fell off for a while, I'm back now. I was low in the spirit. I'm back now. Why are you not persistent? That's diligence. Have you have you have you diminished the propensity of the ministry? Because you if you did, you were not fit for the kingdom. Have you diminished the propensity? of the ministry, meaning have you stopped doing the work to the same degree that you've been doing it? And if you have, you are not fit for the kingdom because you're taking your hand off the plow, you're diminished. Even if you don't fall all the way back into the world, that's not what that's talking about. Have you diminished from the propensity of your ministry? I can't even do this lesson, uh, you know, I'm going to remain strong. We're going to get through this lesson. We're halfway through, Lord willing. But every scripture I read about this topic, literally, I'm so passionate right now about it. Literally, it makes tears come to my eyes. Literally. Because I want to get out of here. I want the Lord to send his son. I want the Lord to send his son. Um, so that we can get what is rightfully ours. You know, the kingdom shall not be left to other people. So the saints of the most high need to take the kingdom. And yes, there will be a war against, you know, um, <clears throat> the elect versus the other nations. You know, the angels, Yahweh Shai. Yes, that's 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 a physical taking. But we spiritually have to be ready before anything physical can take place. <clears throat> so. 
So, give diligence. Second Peter 1, 10 to 11. Give diligence. Remember what it means. Persistent work or effort. Careful persistent work or effort to make your calling and election sure. My energy comes from this. And I, I get tired, but my energy comes from this. What I do for the Lord's people, what I do for my people, what I do for my community. I harness energy from that. I could be, I could have went out and enjoyed myself last night. Came home and continued to, you know, uh, have some festivities, you know, and slept late, slept in, get up. Sometimes I get up one hour before these classes. You guys will never know because I get my energy from this. Don't say, oh, I'm tired. I worked 12 hours. Oh, I'm tired. I had to take care of the kids. Oh, I'm tired. I had to do this. I'm tired. I had to do that. When when you get into the spirit, that is your energy that gives you energy. That spirit of slumber is casted off of you. Now, if reading the Bible makes you sleepy, you better be scared as hell. Are you upset? If you're not upset, you definitely ain't about to make the draft. Are you not upset about our oppression and not just our oppression about the wickedness of our people? If you're not, you're definitely not going to make the draft. I want to call out names so bad. But I'm not. Uh, it makes me upset when I see people who know the truth. Now, don't ever say somebody's in the truth. Everybody's not in the truth just because they know the truth. Everybody's not in the truth because they know the truth. It makes me so upset when I see individuals who do know the truth, but they don't live it. And even if they're attempting to, they're not going above and beyond. They're not doing it with all their heart and with all their soul. Well, Deacon, how do you know that? You don't know. You can't see the insides. Well, the in, whatever, whatever is on the inside of you manifests on the outside. What does that mean? Your internal spirit is a result of your physical actions. What you post, what you say when you post, because a lot of these individuals I only know on social media. So I, I, I'm not going to sit up here and act like that. I know them personally. But judging off of what they're displaying. It makes me upset. Brothers and sisters are acting like they're not getting outworked in the, for this upcoming draft. You're getting outward. This should be friendly competition. Can I tell you guys something? I don't think I, I don't think I've told anybody this, but I compete with other camps. And, it, and it's good competition. I don't think I've told anybody this. I look at their videos. 
I look at their titles. I look at their views. I say, oh, that's that's good. Oh, they're going. They're going. I got it. They're going up right now. Oh, that's a great idea. They're going up. Oh, I got it. They got this many subscribers and that many views. Oh, hell no. Nah. Friendly competition. This is a draft coming up. I'm not about to get outworked. Seven days a week. Sometimes the other day I did seven hours. I did the video on the eclipse. Then I did the Sakari Varsity. Then I hopped on there with God Logic in one day. Maybe have maybe even had counseling that day. But I sure as hell went and had some Casamigos after that. That was a long ass day in the spirit. Right? Uh, moderators, moderators, moderators. Sometimes with, if we're on a serious topic, I'd like to, uh, sometimes if we're on a serious topic and somebody is in the chat talking about UConn versus LSU, just time them out for today. If we're on a serious topic that I want everybody to get, because I just see, looked at my text messages, I had to turn my phone off. I was just too emotional. I couldn't ha I couldn't handle it. I haven't even been looking at the chat because I. This is just an emotional subject for me. But when we're having a serious, especially if you see how serious I am about this, and niggas is in the chat, you know, taken away from the severity of this lesson just time them out for the whole day thank you in ezekiel chapter nine ezekiel chapter nine verse one not only are we competing for this up and coming draft but we're competing to not get killed this is hunger games that's what i should have titled this this truth is hunger games we are competing not to kill each other but to not get killed I want to tell you guys something though. We are competing to kill each other. Ain't that crazy? That's some cold shit. We are literally competing to kill each other because whoever the elect is are going to kill the two thirds. How about that? How about that? I don't think you guys know. This is this is crazy. I need a reader. That's what I need. Next time I do a lesson like this, I gotta have a reader. Cause reading this shit right now is just really putting everything in perspective. Luke 19 and 27. But those mine enemies, this is, the, this is the Messiah speaking, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither. Whoo, he said that. Bring hither and slay them before me. He's not going to do it. He's telling his servants to bring them and then slay them. 
we are competing to see who's going to kill who. I don't want to have to kill y'all. And I don't want y'all to have to kill me. But damn it, I'll do it for my king. I'll do it for my king. So if I am one of those men, if I am, boy, it would hurt to have to kill you guys. That's just what the text says. So we're competing over a spot. And one of one of one of the things you're gonna have to do once you get that spot is kill the wicked Israelites or the Israelites who were who didn't make the cut. So we're competing to not be killed and we're competing to kill. What type of what type of what type of game? It's not a game, but it's the most highest game. And uh, this is all for his enjoyment and praise him and worship him. Because it's his divine prerogative. So in Ezekiel chapter nine, verse one, he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice saying, cause them to have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of a higher gate, which lies toward the north. And I believe these to be the seven archangels. Because there's six men. And they have a slaughtering weapon in their hand. And then one man among them was clothed with linen, a rider's ink horn by his side. That's seven. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink horn by his side. Somebody's names are written on here. You see, we have the book of life. Then he has this list of who's going to be slaughtered. Verse four, and the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. There's some commandments that we're breaking. Well, I, I'm not breaking this one. But there's some com a, a commandment that some of the our Israelites, some of you brothers are are, are are breaking. And that's the hidden highways and byways. We're going to get to what we can do more after after I get through here. We're going to get to what we could do more. But this mark, this seal of exemption. In the Hebrew, it's an exemption from judgment. This mark is going on those who are sighing and crying for all the evil and wickedness, meaning what? You're, 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 you're speaking about it. You're teaching about it. You're rebuking it. You're, magni you're magnifying it, how it's wrong. You're highlighting it. Are you doing that?
you know, especially if you own a business, I was thinking about owning a business, maybe a bar, but I was thinking, you know, I'm going to be refusing service to a lot of people. I might get so many lawsuits because I'm not going to sit in front of any abominable thing and not condemn it in my establishment. Even if it wasn't my establishment, I'm prone to get on it. Right? So we had to do more than just saying, oh, I keep the commandments. Because if we examine that, are you doing it with all your heart and soul, as God said, that would end our captivity? And are you doing the commandments found in the words of who the world calls Jesus Christ? Matthew 5 and 20. For I say unto you that unless, unless your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribe and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Contextually here is, yes, they uh, keep the law of Moses. You know, We know some of them was wicked, but some of them was righteous, right? That's why it says righteousness of the Pharisees. Some of them had righteousness. But they weren't keeping the spirit of the law. Some of them. Just the letter of the law. And then they weren't adhering to the words of the Messiah. That's a law that you have to do that. Mark Spence, I've had enough of you, man. You're no longer allowed to, 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 to comment in this chat. You're welcome to listen. I can't stop you from not listening, but your comments are very, you give a uh, very eccentric vibes with your comments. Therefore, you are no longer be allowed to comment in this chat. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. Now, this is for those of you who say, well, I'm in a wheelchair or you can't even make that excuse, though. We got a brother in a wheelchair out there doing the work. Or you may say, you know, whatever your excuse is, whatever your excuse is, only God knows. If it's justifiable or not. But let's say you can't. He that receiveth the prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Now, does this mean that you can be, you know, a homosexual and just bring drop off water and fringes to the camp? No, you still got to keep the laws, but you may not be able to do it to the ability that the prophets can. I understand that there's different gifts and offices. But vigorous, gracious support of the prophets. According to the Most High Son, will get you a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Mm -mm -mm. Send hand warmers, send water, send fringes, send old equipment, send computers, send clothes, send maybe you got a job or a business, send maybe a brother's in your town, house him, house the prophet, give the prophet lodging. Maybe the prophets in your town don't have a car. Drive them around.
And lastly, which none of you guys want to hear, give the prophet money. Money. Don't be stupid and 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 you know you know he's a false prophet. You don't know the brother. His works hasn't been tested. He hasn't been around the community. I'm not saying that, even though we should help our people if we got it. But I'm not talking about like the Christian church. Niggas asking for private jets and all of that. No, we're not saying that. These are some of the ways we can go above and beyond and keep this commandment. And we'll talk about teaching as well, because somebody said, does it have to be on the streets? It doesn't have to be on the streets. As far as like. Uh, like, you know, on a, on a, on an open road or something like that, but it just means getting out into the field, get out into the community. That's what we're saying. Go outside somewhere, go out, go to a, a, a festival, <laughs> you know, we do that all the time. Go to festivals, go events, go to, um, you know, like the, 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 What's it called? We went to the Nawapian event. We went to the Black Festival. We go to the powwows on the uh, reservations. Get out into the community. Get out into the field. <laughs> the Book of David, I just emailed you. I just uh, texted you earlier to exegete Acts 13 and 47, the Book of David. The book of David, stay on here. That way you can come on here and you can use what God logic taught you and you can show everybody that you got the breakdown, brother. Right. So. Ecclesiastic is four and twenty eight. Ecclesiastic is four and twenty eight. Strive for the truth unto death. Now, strive for the truth unto death. This is not just words. This is something that's going to have to happen. Right? This is going to have to happen. Remember what it says. Be faithful unto death and I will what? I will give you a crown of life. Be faithful unto death. And the Lord shall fight for you. See? Many of y'all think that, man, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm ready, ready to die for this. I don't know if I'm willing to die for this. Right? But if you have that mindset that you are willing to, the Lord will fight for you. Maybe you won't be a martyr. Maybe you won't be a martyr. But if you are a martyr, the disciples were martyrs. Maybe you'll wait to the end. Maybe you'll just be so lukewarm that you'll have to be a martyr to make up for all your lukewarmness. You don't want to get there. You don't want to get there, do you? The book of David. You said God logic cut me on Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49 said Jesus is the light to the Gentiles. I mean, uh, God logic said Jesus is the light to the Gentiles. So the book of David, can you read Acts 13 and 47? And in your next comment, tell me, are we, to, does it say that we, the Israelites are a light to the Gentiles? Thank you. I appreciate you. Anyway, but who wants to who wants to wait until the end? And they've been lukewarm the whole time and then say, all right, I'm going to just be a martyr and try to make up my righteousness like that. Maybe the Lord might not accept that chicken ish sacrifice. Because while yet there was time, you were not building and bidding to the marriage. 
if I could tell you guys what, the, if I could tell you guys, if you guys had the question, what should I do? What can I do? What could I do? I would say bid to the marriage. That's a commandment that a lot of Israelites are not keeping. And you're getting outworked. You're going to miss the drive. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. He's lending us the truth right now by way of the Holy Spirit. And unto them he gave five talents. So we gave some brothers more understanding and knowledge and more boldness, right? Somebody time out Book of David for the whole day. Your next comment was supposed to be, who are the light, according to Acts 13 and 47? Bye. Let me show my screen now. All right, I can show my screen again. I had a meltdown. I'm over it. That verse brought me to tears. That's never happened to me. But I'm over it now. Now I'm getting angry at these scoffers in the chat. I'm ready to go from the emotional loving Karen Deacon to that nigga again. So let's talk about the talents, right? Let's talk about the talent. So one brother got five talents, another got two, another got one. To every man, this is important too. This is important too. Because you might not be the one bringing it out at camp. You might not be the one bringing it out on the internet. Read. Read for the brother. Hold a sign, hold posts, show a sign of solidarity and force that we're a force out in these streets to be reckoned with. So yes, it says he gave every man according to his several ability. That's right, all working together. The pinky toe is very important. The pinky is very important. And straightway took his journey. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So he did something with the truth that was lended to him. What are you doing with it? Are you just hiding it? Are you just saying, I'm going to do this alone by myself? There's one camp that say, don't teach your children. Don't teach. I ain't even going to name that camp. Israel Grace, the water for becoming a Sakari flexer. Go check out that exclusive content on the channel. Excuse me. You guys want to know what I could do more of? I self-examine all the time. That's why the Bible says, examine yourself whether ye be in the faith. You want to know what I could do more of? Not not just for, you know, your personal life is the ministry. Your family life is the ministry. You know, how are they going to talk about you to the community if you have to leave this earth or if they just want to represent you and be proud of you in general?
Um, what I could do more of for the ministry specifically, meaning building the kingdom, it does start within your household. So you got to examine that. But that takes a back seat to the Lord's work. That's why it says those that have wives be as though they had none. I could do more music. I could write more books. I could go speak at colleges, even though they'll let like a lukewarm Christian Israelite do that. They wouldn't let a radical extremist like us do that. Even if we agree to all terms. See, the devil's only going to let the truth get out to a certain extent. But it don't matter because this is the, this is the narrow gate. So that's what I feel like I could do more of. We, we, I also feel like, as far as Sakari Seattle goes, we can go to more events. We can go to more events, not just on the highways downtown every Saturday, and also do extra camp days. All right, we could do more. So that's what I, in my, what my calling in my ministry, um, we could do more events, showing up at more events here in Seattle, adding extra camp days, write more books, do more music. Those are things that I would like to do. And and maybe, I don't think I would be content at that point, but I would feel good that, okay, I could probably do one more thing after that. I don't know. But seven days a week doing the Lord's work, no days off. If I do, it's because of, a, of an emergency, but generally no days off. I feel like I can add those four things to my ministry. As far as a husband, definitely uh, I could be a better husband when it comes to um, being more affectionate. That's my problem, because like many of us, we were not grown. We didn't grow up in the house where household where they were. We had endearing parents and then we can't blame them because their parents didn't show that them that love either so it's this cycle that we have to break that's why i tell my children all the time out of nowhere i love you my son he's 13 now he texted me the other day while i was out he just said i love you dad i'm like are you okay <laughs> but i tried to make it i tried to make it uh normal i try to make it normal because when they do show love don't make it abnormal make it feel normal make it feel regular right so we got to break that cycle um as a father because remember your ministry is also a part of your house your household is also a part of your ministry this is just true um uh as a father, you definitely have to, me personally, um, be more hands-on with your children. Be more hands-on with your children. <laughs> Patrick, I like that title, Draped Old Mania. I was going to use that for an album cover. Uh, you want to be more hands-on with your children. With all that's going on on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, this is part of your ministry. Instead of feeding them all of that, make sure you're feeding them the truth, feeding them the scriptures, right? Um, don't force it on your children. I'm not saying don't let them allow them to break God's laws while they're living in your house. I'm saying don't force the the reading part the the studying part on your children or they might resent you let pray that the most high put the spirit on them to hunger and thirst for it so like with my children right we do bible study and i don't force it so when we do it they love it make a project out of it all of that um but again living a lifestyle of keeping the commandments and studying the bible is two different things right if they're under your rule and their guide and you're the man of your house 
then you are telling them what laws to keep. That's not necessarily going into the Bible and doing Bible study with them, but you're telling them which laws to keep or not. That's different than actual the Bible study part. That part you don't want to force on your children or they might resent you. Right. You don't want them to be like the pastor's kids. It was forced on the pastor's kids. Therefore, the pastor's kids grew up and became homosexual. Right. But that's just a little bit. Of, of what you could do in your household, if even myself, or what I could do in my household, to do more. Right? <laughs> Epic deacon rant. I'm going to come back to that in Matthew. In Revelation 11, no, Revelation 12. Revelation 12 and 11. Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame. You want to overcome? Who in here wants to overcome the evilness of this world, Satan's devices, and then ultimately overcome the plagues and the judgment and the end of the world? A lot of fake pages in the chat. It's all good, moderators. Moderators, just block the fake pages. So if you want to overcome, here's how. If you want to make it to this draft, here's how. If you want to be accepted in this draft, here is how. <clears throat> Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. You got to believe in Yahweh Shah. You got to believe in who the world calls Christ. Not only that, you got to do what he said do. Able, body, able bodies have to do what he said to do. And by the word of their testimony. They were out here teaching. To give a testimony, you got to teach. What does testimony? What does testimony mean? What does testimony mean? Let's show how you overcome. A formal, written, or spoken statement. A formal, written, or spoken statement. You got to get out here and teach. That's how you get the blood off your hands. You got to get out here and teach. And and or link up with the brothers that are teaching not just that and they loved not their lives unto death damn and they loved not their lives unto death Nothing came before the most high. Nothing came before the truth. Nothing came before the ministry. We didn't go above and beyond for our jobs. We went above and beyond for the father's business. And if your life does, if your livelihood does depend on your job, then you should be given equal energy and time to the most high, to the best of your ability. And they loved not their lives unto death. That's how they overcame. Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Oh, you want to be an NFL player. You want to be 
a celebrity barber. You want to be a famous TikToker. You want to be a five-star chef. You want to be a crypto guru. You want to be a real estate guru. You want to be um, executive director at your job. You want to own a salon. You want to own a clothing line. And I'm talking about things that have nothing to do with building the kingdom of God. A rapper. Now, you can be an Israelite rapper and you can't have Israelite clothing. That helped build the ministry of God, of course. But I'm talking about outside of that, no. So you're you're going to you're going to lose your life because you found life already. Meaning majority of your time and your purpose in existence is not for God. It's not for building his kingdom. Therefore, you're going to ultimately lose your life. You're going to be the ones who the, the righteous Israelites kill. If you don't go above and beyond, righteous Israelites are going to kill you and your family. That's what the book says. If you don't die in the plagues, if you don't die in that lake of fire, you when you get rounded up to that wilderness, <clears throat> oh, the righteous Israelites are going to slay you there because you didn't go above and beyond. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Oh, how many of y'all got rid of your career for the truth? Because you knew that it would affect the truth, like it would go against it. I'm not saying you can't be in the truth and have a career, but would your career would have been like, you know, uh, like, like a rapper or NBA player. They can't promote the truth in the Israelites. Look at Kyrie Irving. They tried to kill that nigga. How many people got rid of their trade career or their aspiring dreams for the truth because it would a take up too much time you, you wouldn't have time to do the lord's work or b it will go against what you your belief system i know i did Matthew 31. Yeah, tattooing. Like a tattoo artist. Yep. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided the, the, uh, the sheep from the goats. And he shall set his sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is the draft. This is the draft here. How many of y'all are going to make it? Or are you getting outworked? This is a competition here. Look what he says. For I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. This is what the Lord is telling everybody on Judgment Day. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and gave you to drink? Or we saw you as a stranger and took you in or naked or clothed you. We saw you sick in prison and came to visit you. And the king answered to them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. Verily I 
lot of y'all might a lot of y'all gonna get a lot of a lot of y'all are going to make it to that draft by your support for the prophets by su your support for your brothers and sisters in the truth a lot of y'all gonna make it that way but you got to go above and beyond even that way oh i i i i <clears throat> I sent this i sent in some tassels every two years i sent the dollar in every year um i sent the bottle of water once a year no nah. Multiply your talents. Now, at this time, I'll open it up for questions, comments, and smoke. I'm going to put a link in the chat for the Christians who are in the chat. It's a lot of Christians. They're going to be invited to come on here and get a quick beating. Before I pass it to Hassad and Chief Priest Alazar Baloy. But any questions as it pertains to the topic? 144,000 are men, not women. But women can be saved, and women do not have to be saved. The women don't have to have a husband to be saved. The Bible talks about the widow being saved. Christians, he says, somebody says, why are Christians in the chat? Because they learn from the deacon. You don't hear when they come on here and say, deacon, I've been watching you for three, four years. Now, a lot of these Christians are taking our doctrine because they know it's true. What if I feel like I'm not ready to start? Well, what, what makes you feel like that? Let's start there. What makes you feel like that? Why do the Jewish community reject Jesus Christ? Because he proves that they are not bloodline descendants. Somebody says the law was temporary until the Messiah came. Well, why are why were the disciples still following the law? You know what was in the law, right? Homosexuality. So that was temporary until Christ came. Now it's okay. Why are we following the law in the kingdom of God? Read Micah chapter 4, please. Maybe that'll help you, Daniel. Somebody said, okay, he says, he's not ready to start because he needs to learn more of the Bible. Well, what's stopping you from learning more of the Bible? You can go out there with basic principles. I created something in Sakari years back called the Five Point Ministry. Learn, break down who the Israelites are, break down who the Edomites are, Salvation only for Israel. Keeping the law and the Gentiles in the New Testament are Israelites. That's the five-point ministry. What's going on, brother? You're live. What's going on? Shalom, Shalom. King. Shalom. 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 What's going on? Um, brother? Other than that, as uh, far as with competing, is there competing for the 144,000 according to the Bible? You know what I mean? I'm just asking. Well, when I say competing, I'm, I'm not being literal. I'm saying let's act like this is a competition. That way you can go above and beyond because the Bible says the elect will be the ones going above and beyond, sighing and crying, uh, lifting up their voice like the trumpet, doing the work, um, um, sealing their, well, we can't seal, but by way of us teaching, the Holy Spirit seals those who receive the teachings. So that's, that's the concept I'm giving. All right, King. Thank you very much. Shalom. Come on, shalom. Uh, Brother Nicholas. Brother Nicholas. Sh shalom, man. What's going on? Shalom. What's going on? <sighs> Nothing much, bro. Um, you wasn't the only one who broke down earlier, bro. You was not the only one that broke down, man, at all. Yeah, that was heavy. It's, it's heavy. It's a, it's a passionate thing. And and we if we don't, start bringing this type of lesson these type of lessons and messages out 
it's going it's going it's going to take forever and ever for us to to get the hell up out of here yeah man because i dance a lot i know i need to do more man i ain't shit, bro all right i'm trying not to break down right now it's just uh but you know you got today you got today brother so if we got today then we can do more today yeah Shit, bro yeah we got today brother Yeah. Oh shit, bro. Oh, my bad. God damn it. No, you good. You good. You good, man. Um. Oh, come on, come on. Okay. Um. So yeah. Uh. <laughs> I was finna come over here and say, you know, um, as far as us, you know, definitely we 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 all need to do more. Um, you know, that definitely, you know, most I put the spirit on me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to do a whole lot more and um. You know, after especially after you know the main Sakari base got shut down, because you know I'm on, I'm going, I'm, I'm here on you know a college campus right now, and I live on campus, and uh, I sent out a lot of videos, you know, uh, from the main Sakari channel, especially from that Vivi Yasharal series, because you know I'm on, I live in Chicago, and it's like you know <laughs> this had this got to be for the spirit, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm on the north side of Chicago, and the college I'm going to, it's a lot of Northern Kingdom brothers and sisters here too, you know, so it's like when that, you know, when, when it's the devil shut the main page down that really really pissed me off and um and i and i've been contemplating this ever since the semester started um and now even more now i really want to do this you know because i have a class you know a video production class and i want to do a little documentary type video um i i want to i want to um actually break down the 12 tribes chart you know mm -hmm. yeah and that that's that's crazy that you said that just through the spirit because the main page being shut down that's going to make everybody do more because even myself, I relied on a lot of those videos from the main page because my head and my, my head ain't as big as Alizar. Alizar got a big ass head. He can remember, he got mega mind, right? He can remember <laughs> all these, uh, these lessons, but me, you know, uh, the main channel had a lot of videos that were my reference videos when people asked Deacon, uh do you guys teach this i will go to the main page and i will send them the video or deacon we need the northern kingdom breakdown i will go to the main page and i will send the video now not only is that causing alizar to do more now but that's going to cause a lot of people i can't say all of us because everybody don't listen to sakari majority of the time but all of us who did who does listen to uh all of y'all who do rock with us you're gonna have to do more now and kind of get on your own and investigate what you can until we can re-upload those videos or redo those videos. Yeah, well, that's um, the spirit. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, mm. and plus I, you know, and it's all praise to the Most High. I took, you know, some lots of time to um because Alistair had did I think about a three-hour breakdown of you know the the, the, uh, the chart on his uh it was, it was a Flux Friday one off back in like what 2022 I think, and mm. I like I, I told him on his cheap dome uh, chat um. So a couple months ago, I wrote like everything down. I got a whole packet of the, of the entire presentation. I wrote everything down. Um, and so that's just extra stuff about, you know, the prophecies of Deut Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 33 and um, four, Genesis 49. Took time to write that down. And hopefully, you know, I can, you know, through the spirit, I can go through it. I'm not, you know, I need to definitely read a whole lot more. You know, I, I stutter a lot. I'm not very clear in my speech. Like Moses said, I'm, I'm working on it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm working on it still, you know. Yeah, and you know, uh, like I said, brother, you have you got oxygen in your lungs. We got today to do more. The, if the Lord didn't want you to do more, you wouldn't be one of the 500 people watching. Like I said, usually it'd be up to a thousand. It's lately it's been a, uh, about a thousand. But you know, topics like this it makes people uncomfortable. We have to face our fears and we have to face our our um, our flaws as well. So that we could we could get over it and, and, and do what we got to do. Yeah, definitely, man. But this 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 is definitely needed. This is definitely a wake up call, bro, for, for me and like you said for yourself and for a lot of our brothers and sisters, man. But uh, thank you. Uh, all praise to the Most High. Yeah, I'll watch and have a shot. All praises, King. Yep, reach out anytime, brother. Definitely. Shalom. Uh, somebody named the brother. Uh, Shalom, King. Shalom. 
I just, uh, I agree with you when, when you were saying that, you know, it's a difference from a person being in the truth and knowing the truth. You know, I agree with you on that. I can't, now I can't say that I, I've been in the truth all my life, you know what I'm saying? But I've been knowing, knowing other truth majority of my life, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the scripture where because I, I was on uh, I was talking to my cousin me and him we've been uh, we've been knowing of the truth most of our lives and uh, he was under the impression that he he don't believe there's a, a scripture or uh, there's a word rapture in the scripture but he was thinking of uh, under the under the impression that ta- being taken was being used in a, in a, in a metaphor of being being as far as being delivered from the destruction on earth and what and i was trying to tell him is that second edger chapter 13 was saying um uh, chat ch- second edger chapter 13 verse 16 uh for as i conceive in my understanding woe well, unto them that shall be left in those days and much more woe well, unto them that are not left behind uh could you give me a little understanding so i mean because i gave him as much as i could but could you give me more clarity or understand the plea yeah so when it's saying left in those days meaning those who are alive in those days did you read it in a different translation i did a video on that scripture so long ago that's crazy i, I did a video it's been maybe a decade since no, I, was, I, I was yeah yeah what what those those that be left kjv yeah, I was looking for it, you know what I'm saying? I don't see majority of Sakari videos since 2000. Uh, okay, it's second is 13. So I'm going to show you what it reads in a different translation. Second is 13. Yeah, there is no rapture. Like, we're getting taken up to the chariots, but the Christian says that Jesus comes, he stops in the clouds, he, 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 he picks up the church, then they go to heaven for seven years, then he comes back while the Israelites have to suffer seven years of tribulation. That's not Bible, so we definitely don't want to use this word rapture, but we are taken up by chariots. Ain't nobody getting left behind. If you're left behind, that's for a missile, and that's it. So look at this in 2nd Ezra 13. Let's read the GNT, right? And the GNT is going to give you a simplified word where it says... You may be certain that those who survive are far more fortunate than those who die. Right? So it's saying that you're more blessed if you're than the one than the our ancestors who are in the spirit world because you get to be here to see the Messiah coming and see the end of the world. That's all it's saying. Right. So uh what I what I was trying to explain, if it makes any sense, is that. For those ones, like, because it would be two left in, it would be two in the field of one taken. For those ones, for that one that is one taken, yeah, much no. more. No, that's not about the end of the world. That's about 70 AD. Uh, okay. Can I get some tea? Okay, so, okay, so I was kind of wrong. Okay. That's what I need, man. I mean, I'm gonna need the weather right now. Yeah, my bad. Not yeah, but bad. that's 70 AD that 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 getting taken. Okay. Somebody, D- Daniel is in the chat. Daniel, Daniel, can we speak to you just a little bit? We don't have to yell and scream and argue. We just want to speak to Daniel about your uh, about legalism. Yeah, but uh, good to see you, though, brother. You good, King? I'm just on the weather, man. Just sick, man. Hey, take some black seed oil. Get you some echinacea. Uh, you know, a lot of fruits, a lot of fruits, and triple your water intake. You got Tylenol. That ain't gonna help you. That's 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 gonna numb the pain. We want to get rid of it. We want to get rid of the virus and bacteria. Triple your water intake. Spring water only. Let the water. Drink that water that hit that rock. All right. All right. Shalom, King. Shalom, brother. Okay. I seen you guys was asking questions. We got time for a few more questions. If I missed your question, shoot them real quick, real quick. 
Let me get them all. I am starving. What's your thoughts on the Greek Septuagint? You should study it. But the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Masoretic Texts agree more than the opposites agreeing with the Septuagint. What's going to happen to the one third? The one third is being tried in the wilderness and they're going to come out with crowns. They're going to be saved. The Holy Spirit is not a person. It's called the Spirit of God. So it's an extension of the Heavenly Father, him imparting energy and electricity into vessels. No, they're not backed up on CZYN. If I didn't answer your question, shoot it real quick. Who is, whose job is to separate the tares from the wheat? The Messiah. Unless somebody tells you that their dad, their lineage is, their lineage patrilineally is of a white man. For mentorship, uh, hit SakariSeattle at gmail.com. SakariSeattle at gmail.com. Emails on the screen. <clears throat> the way the rapture explains itself is bad. Doing truth music in form of teaching, yes, but I wouldn't solely only do that and think you're going to get in. Ah, bravo. The Bible says keep all the laws from the least of the commandments to the greatest. Patrick T, we got you on the show already. And I asked you one, one thing about the Hebrew and you couldn't answer. So no, we are not interested. How about half of one? Why don't you ask her? J Smooth 88. Um if you have to leave for a necessity or for the Lord's work, other than that, I would advise to rest on your property or one of your properties. The 666 is still dealing with America, but our people outside of America are going to conform to the ways of America anyway. What are my thoughts on different Passover dates? People don't know when the new year is. That's why. That's why it's good to have a Levitical priest who knows the law. Moderators, put where they can go to see where their nearest Sakari camp is. What is it? Sakari.camp? Somebody help me out here. 144,000 or 12,000 12, from each tribe. But it says virgins. Well, the apostles, they had wives and children, so are they not going to be a part of that? It's not literal. The foul women, the Bible talks about these doctrines, false doctrines being like women. So it's those have not that have not been defiled with false doctrines and ideologies and silly philosophies. 
I asked you, how do you say Elijah in Hebrew, Patrick? That's what I asked you. Jalen Johnson, we don't know. I believe they're just Israelites, though. The Book of Enoch is garbage. There, there may have been a Book of Enoch. Actually, there was in the ancient world, but the book they have today, there is no ancient manuscripts that can corroborate that that's the book from antiquity. So I'm gonna end this, y'all. Where are they live at? Where is Alizar and Hassad live at right now? Are they on Sakari camp? Where is Alizar and Hassan live at? There's so many channels. They're either, either going to be on Sakari HQ or Sakari Canon. All right. Patrick, please, just leave somewhere. Oh, you did? You got this picture, huh? African surf. We'll ask, well, you can could, you could ask a couple questions. I got a couple minutes. Who's Don Mack? What did Don Mack ask? Oh, well, those who keep the Sabbath on Pagan Friday even to Pagan Saturday be destroyed and punished that's a good question. Damn. That's a good question. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Because I'm not sure brothers know that they're that in, they're intentionally they're saying we know okay, it's a Friday. It's 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 not the Sabbath from the Hebrew, from the from the ancient world. So I don't know if brother, I don't think brothers are intentionally. Now I did hear that there was an elder that said they know the lunar Sabbath is what we kept, but for convenience and captivity, they keep Friday to Saturday. That might the Lord might pay you back for something like that because now you're intentionally breaking the law. The man of perdition is the Edomites. That's why he says the mystery of iniquity. That's also the man of sin. He says it's already at work in his time. How? Through the Roman Empire. Mark of the Beast is the RFID chip. It's the only viable explanation. Okay, let's end this, everybody, by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. We do so by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Wait, African... African surf said debate what? What did he say? I have a couple more questions, but they can wait. Wait. I don't see. Yeah, how was I told you to listen to Moses? And Moses told you to listen to how was I? So both. And they're not saying anything different. Okay, y'all, let's end this by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. And we do so by Shema Mashiach Kawashai. We're going to be live on Sakari HQ. Sakari HQ, one word. Shalom, y'all.